To keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today. Or call us at 276-889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk in and Roll in Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together to create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk in and Roll in Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Introducing Tractor USA, the best way to buy and sell premium ag and construction equipment. Tractor USA was designed to be straightforward, simple, and affordable with zero commission and live auctions every week. Tractor USA auctions offer the finest selection of pre-owned tractors, combines, and other ag and construction equipment from across the United States and the world. Simply go to TractorUSA.com to get started today. It's the oldest continuously operating motorsport facility in the world. And here today, the Saturday Night Racing League is going to host race number 12 of the season. Welcome in, everybody. I'm your host, Bradley Cooper, alongside Connor Horn, my co-commentator of the season. Connor, the shakeup in the points. We've had our fourth change for the lead as Joseph McWhorter had a good stretch, but Jeff Wright takes it back going into this week. Yeah, it's no surprise to see Jeff right at the top, especially after a race win. That was his fourth win of the season, I believe. He's got 10 all-time in his series. And Joseph McWhorter initially took it from Alex Bell, who fell off. He had it for about two, three weeks right back on top, but still only by four points. McWhorter with that one win could easily take it back. We don't know what to expect here at the Milwaukee Mile, a track that's making its debut in Saturday Night Racing. You can see how tight the points are. Top four separated by 27 points. Then Joshua Banks fifth in points with just two wins on the season. Ortega down in eighth. And we're only three races away, including including tonight three races away from deciding who the top 12 are in the points and that cut line's incredibly tight ray massey with a win but he's only one point ahead of max cost race analysis up on your screen 150 laps here today five tire sets available three green white checkered attempts and we'll have 85 percent fuel that will also affect the handling we have a modified fix setup so everyone running an identical set but testing this week they decided that the setup needed a little tweaking it was a little too tight for the liking of some of these drivers so we're gonna have a, a little bit different here tonight in the b car but take a look at the milwaukee mile not very much banking here connor and that's if you're not a fan of tracks like gateway or maybe new hampshire you're probably not gonna like this place either yeah we'll just have to see what we find out we've gone to gateway and we'll see what this race provides it says nine degrees of banking i guarantee you the drivers aren't going to feel that it's going to feel flat because it basically is flat it's most likely i think it might be the flattest track on the on the on the schedule besides road courses i think even new hampshire has more banking so these drivers are going to be on edge and usually we do have a tight setup for the fixed setup is usually incredibly tight at milwaukee so no surprise that they went to modify it we'll still probably see drivers struggle with saving the right front no matter what you do to the setups on these Xfinity cars, especially at a track like this, you're probably still going to burn that off. And we're going to see a lot of drivers struggle to pass. I could easily see things getting spread out, but I've also seen races here get very wild and very crash heavy. We just don't know what to expect here tonight as drivers are coming close to one to green. Well, let's get your grid up on the screen. Starting out front here today, it's Joshua Banks, and it would appear that my ATVO just crashed. So excellent. We'll get you through your grid, Chuck Sweeting. Maybe the luck turns around for him tonight. He's going to start outside the front row, but uh, through row number two, it's going to be Jeff Wright, Bailey Turner. Then it goes with Angela Hironis, Reggie Ortega in the fifth and sixth position. Philip Brewer in seventh, Alec Martinez in eighth, and rounding out the top ten will be Chad Klinger and Eric Cotton. 
we're talking about how hard it is to pass. It's so hard to pass. Alec Martinez actually qualified tonight. Just McWhorter, number 73 and 11th. Alex Bell starts 12th. Clark Genekin, I believe, making his debut. Even the Vegas Golden Knights Super starts 13th. Caleb Weekly, 14th. Gavin Pittman starts in the 15th position alongside Bryce Shoemaker in the number 43. Jerry Bergeron in 17th. Brian Carwell, 18th. Austin Belke, the last qualifier on speed in the 19th position. And Stephen Davis in the number 66 starts 20th. 21st will be Max Koss, Brandon Wallace in 22nd, but we're going to cycle through these lists of names because of that ATVO crash. I apologize for that, but we should be able to get through it. But let's take a green flag in racing from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's go for 150 miles. Pace car out of the way. Let's bring it to you live. by the lead lap number one, Joshua Banks in the 35 car. And I tell you what, it looked like that guy was uh, set up here in qualifying, but you got you got a lot of guys behind him that were quick in practice. The 24, Bailey Turner was also really fast. I have to say that this race is all but over as far as it comes to speed. A lot of potential in the deep in this field. Yeah, and we'll have to see. I mean, Alec Martinez was a full tenth faster than Joshua Banks in practice. Couldn't translate that to qualified, so he has some work to do. But uh, we're going to see all night here. Track positions going to be very important. You're going to want tires as well, but if you're on even tires, or even-ish tires, you're going to want to stay at the front instead of going to the back. It is going to be tough to pass as everyone's about to get single file. The only driver on the top side, the furthest driver up, stuck on the high side, is Eric Hutton. He's about to fall back to the tenth position is raising Kane's Chevrolet Camaro. As you can see, everyone riding the very bottom. You're trying to get your left sides as close to that curb as possible. You might want to actually hit it a little bit, but not too much. We just heard Alec Martinez touch that curb there as he exit turn four. Wouldn't be the first time that we've seen somebody tag that apron though and send the car around. It can upset it very easily. There's a fine line there, Connor, between making that car turn and then overdoing it and ending up uh, in the outside wall or doing a 180 on the front stretch. Yeah, you hit the curb too harshly, it'll bounce you up into, uh, up out of the groove. And if you're not careful, if someone's on your outside, you might turn them around. But we might see drivers get physical tonight with how hard it could be to pass. That bumper is definitely in play. And if you get the boot entering a corner, you're not saving it with how flat this corner is. It's almost like ice once you get loose on corner entry. So you got to be careful about that as there comes Jeff Wright for second. He got to be inside of Chuck Sweeting, who had a nice sixth place finish last week. And he's going to try to back that up, but he's about to go backwards. And he's going to probably let the points leader through here. Yeah, Jeff Wright to the inside. It opens up the door for the 24. Bailey Turner is also going to be on the inside as they exit turn four. He'll clear him now as they come down the front stretch. Five laps completed already. We went five miles. Very fast racetrack here today, and we know how Saturday night racing likes to do it. As least amount of cautions as possible. We don't have stage breaks in this league. We don't have competition cautions. So this race could easily go the full distance, Connor, if, if we keep these guys spread out. And especially with a small field of 23 cars that uh, really only uh, trying to look at the board. Yeah, 22 cars who started this race tonight that it's going to make that a little bit easier for drivers to probably get spread out, get in a rhythm and really not have a lot of instance. Even at Kansas, which is pretty chaotic and it was chaotic. We only had about two yellows after Jeff Wright when Jeff Wright took the victory. So a lot of potential for some single file spread out racing, but hopefully good racing at the front is I'm sure a battle will be on our hands soon because Jeff Wright is closing in a little bit on Joshua Banks. Banks is keeping it together pretty well. Half a second there. Last time by, he was just about a tenth slower. I think Jeff is coming and going. It seems like it takes a little bit and then gives a little bit back. This time by, not quite as fast. It's going to be tough to make that ground up, but... Uh, you know, if anyone's capable of it, it's Jeff Wright as 
We're going to see how long Banks can stay out there. Clean air is king at a track like this. So Joshua Banks, no doubt, he's in the best spot right now compared to everyone else. He's about nine laps complete here. Eight laps completed, working lap nine, and are almost fully single file throughout the field. In fact, we are single file through all 22 cars. From Banks back to 99 to Brandon Wallace. Looking on board with the 13 to Caleb Weekly. A little peek to the inside from Ryan Carwile. And we saw the 71. He's kind of had some tough luck. We're going to talk about a guy that's kind of had Chuck Sweeting's uh, virus here, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Chuck's just had the worst luck of all of them, but Carwile also in the same boat. He was having, he was destined to probably finish in the top five last week, and it didn't pan out. Yeah, it didn't pan out. Got rear bumper damage, and that kills you at a mile and a half. So kind of relegated him down the order. He's still seventh in points and a good spot to compete for a title here once the chase starts up, but definitely needs something to go his way and he definitely didn't have a qualifying run he wanted that track like this. Stuck behind Caleb Weekly in that number 13 that's been so good this season is almost have packs forming. He got about the top yeah. eight spread out and you know who's leading that second line. Almost looks like a pack race. Alec Martinez at ninth. I can only imagine he is hard saving those tires like he always does. Yeah, 51 leading this second tandem from ninth on back. And then you have a second or a third group, rather, just behind Ryan Carwa. Siri Bergeron with Max Koss, Bryce Shoemaker, Austin Belke. Kind of goes into the wheelhouse of there's different speeds at this racetrack. However, if you get stuck behind somebody, you just have to match that until you find a way around them. It's just so tough to pass that you could be held up two or three tenths slower than what you really are. Yeah, and we're seeing that right now. Martinez is probably hard saving the tires, but Chad Klinger is having to run 31.4s because of that. Joshua Banks, the race leader, uh, ran a 31.293 last time by. Jeff Wright was even faster than that, so just shows how much ground you lose once you're stuck behind someone. And I'm sure Klinger knows if 51's trying to save, and he just can't do anything about it because I'm sure Alec will get on the loud pedal even more if the 09 tries to lo lose in track position. I think a part of this is Alec, I think, dropped back just enough as we see the battle in front of him for seventh. I think he's dropped back just enough to where he has clean air so he can really hard save the tires and not have dirty air on the nose. Uh, that's very important and it's kind of risky to do that because he's backed up about seven cars, but that could get him back to the front later on. So the Xfinity cars came back, back here. Actually, it was the truck series that came back to this racetrack the last time the Xfinity race at this track was, it was still called the Bush Series, I believe. It was the Bush Grand National Series in the 84-85 season. Uh, NASCAR came back in 2023. They repaved the surface last in the debut of the Craftsman Truck Series in 1995. So this track, very old. They, they set it in pre-race. It gives it character, Connor. I, I don't know if I agree because this, this racing surface is just hell on tires. It's hell on drivers. And... You know, the Milwaukee Mile is similar to Dover, where it just beats you up. Yeah, it is a tough, tough track. Your tires are going to be crying at the end of their stints. As, like you said, the Xfinity Series hasn't been here in a while. I believe, actually, the last time they came here was 2009. Carl Edwards went to victory lane, beat Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, all those guys. But it's been 15 years, and it's kind of odd because this is a very old scan. When the trucks came back to Milwaukee, along with Arca as well, we saw that groove go above this little grip strip near the bottom of the corner as the Zero Nines almost laying the bump in Martinez. They actually ran in the middle of the corner in those truck races, in that truck race. But not really the same luck tonight. Everyone's trying to plant the bottom. If you get out of the groove, we've seen a lot of drivers go backwards, like that 88, who started in 10th. He's only gone back one position, but he's just one of the examples getting stuck in that top line, not what you want to do. He falls back out of the top 10. He's got a lot of ground to make up of over five and a half seconds to your leader, Joshua Banks. That lead starting to grow back. Eight tenths of a second. You think Banks may be saving a little bit here for the later run? I mean, 85% fuel, Connor. They probably could go very easily 75 laps. We'll have to see here. I'm not sure. You're having a lot of throttle uh, into the corners. But you do have a lot of off-throttle time, but they're 32nd laps. I'd be, I don't know. I think I'd be a little surprised to see them get the halfway. Uh, we usually don't see that at these tracks. We don't usually see one-stops work. So we'll, we'll see if anyone tries to stretch it. I'd be... Bailey Turner. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be <laughs> Yeah, if anyone does, it's Bailey. But I would expect drivers to try a two-stop. I think we're going to see a lot of fall-off tonight. We're... 16 laps in and honestly saying that i'm expecting a lot of fall off 
Looking at Joshua Banks, well, he does have a decent amount of ball off. He's about a second off, but Alec Martinez, you can tell how much he's saving because his fastest time is a 31.1, and he's still, last time I ran, a 31.3. Definitely playing the long game. Battle up ahead. Here goes it's Ortega going by Philip Brewer for that is the seventh position. Brewer overshot the entry of three a little bit, opened up the door for the two, and sorry, missed that there, and they happened so quick. Actually got to move back here with Carwile going to the inside of Weekly. Kind of the same thing happens. Overshoots the entry of the corner, opens up the door, and the 71 is going to pick up a spot. It's really the only way. You have to put the pressure on. When guys talk about putting the pressure, it's you fill that mirror up, and you make that guy kind of guess where he can break based off of your distance to him. And if you're filling up that back bumper, he might send it a little bit deeper into the corner and overshoot it. And he can't afford to overshoot it because if you're out of the groove, you're going backwards. I think Weekly might have let him go there because I think Carwell is faster, but he still missed the corner trying to let someone go because you don't really want to pinch someone into the corner here. A lot of drivers see a lot of room to the outside, so they, can just, they assume you can give the driver on the inside a lot of room, but that's not the case. You're going backwards, you're hurting the tires, and you might even get into the wall if you give someone too much room as it's tough to go side by side at this track as Carwell's starting to move up to the front trying to get by Gavin Pittman for what would be 14th. So one of the few passes on the racetrack, back to back here for the 71. Can't quite complete that one in that higher line on the grip strip. Kind of working for the 22. He's holding him down in check. Trying to. It's. I think it's all right through the majority of the corner, but it's the exit where that's really going to bite you unless you're pinching the driver on the inside down, which he didn't do weekly through it in the turn number three there, trying to get to the inside. It's kind of like Martinsville, conveyor belt. If you get stuck on outside of the conveyor belt, you're going to go backwards. And Pittman's trying to avoid that, and he does. He got a good run off of four. He's actually going to go back to the inside of Carwile, trying to get that position back as they're also side by side ahead. Philip Brewer's going backwards. Martinez, Klinger get by as Pittman gets back by Caleb Weekly, or by Caleb Weekly, I should say. Alex Bell and Clark uh, Gnecken, I believe is the pronunciation of that debut in there. Gnecken is currently down, or up one spot rather, from where he began the race, but you gotta think, these guys probably gonna make a vast majority of their moves on pit road on fresh tires, especially when they first come out. That's probably all the passing you're going to see for a dramatic amount of positions. The biggest mover of this race right now, 73 car, Gordon? Joseph McWhorter. In six positions, 11th to 5th. And looking at the leaderboard, I think the next closest would be Carwile up four spots and Max Cost up four spots. But that's a pretty much it. Our Shoemaker is one of those who've gone backwards 16th to 21st. But we might be adding Philip Brewer to that list. He is starting to fade. He's about to go back to 11th. And he, as we're talking about, yeah. he's stuck in the high line and he cannot get down. And he's going to make some contact with Button there. He'll lose more momentum. And we should see Genekin get back to his inside. Get to his inside, I should say. Close the door a little bit here for the 44. This is just outside the top 10. too far away from having a battle of a lead as well. Jeff Wright has chased back down Joshua Banks and is on his bumper as he's to have checked out from Bailey Turner. Well, two seconds back to third position. Two tenths separate the leaders and Jeff Wright putting the pressure on for Joshua Banks who's led every single lap of the 25 completed as they come across the line, move to the outside. Wright had the, had the momentum, just didn't have anywhere to take it. Oh, you can tell he's got better rear tires right now. We didn't talk about that much, but you need to save the rear tires out of track this flat. If you mash the throttle on short run, you were going to kill your exit. It looks like the 48's done a better job saving those rears, getting better runs out of the corner. He almost hit the 35 on corner exit of turn four, but he's using that to his advantage right now. He's also going to enter a little higher, maybe try to do a crossover out of the corner with that better at corner exit, but I don't think he's quite close enough. And he's using all of the exit on turn four. I mean, just inches left on that turn four exit wall. I Ooh. have to. Oh man, he Ooh, is. What? He was. Uh, he, <laughs> I was just. I was just looking back at it. I didn't see that he got that close to the wall. Yeah. Uh, so he went over the battle for 11. Philip Brewer has not let Clark Ennekin by yet. And Alex Bell. He's 
try not to go three wide because I think he knows it's not smart. But he might have no choice at some point because these two are losing a lot of time to the drivers ahead. They were four tenths of a second slower than Hutton up the road. It looks like now Philip Brewer, I think he's going to lose this battle as Genekin just squeezes the Golden Knight Super in front of the 44. So Brewer down five positions now from where he began this race. He's going to fall back six to 13. Almost some contact with the outside wall. Ryan Carwile will be the next one. And we'll do a little flip-flop here for positions gained. Carwile will go up five. Brewer down seven if he loses this spot. And it looks like he will. He's stuck up on that outside, Connor, and it's just not where you want to be right now. Definitely not. And he's gone so far backwards. He was in at least the sixth position, and he has gone so far backwards at this point. We're starting to see some more movement. Reggie Ortega is now stuck on the high line. Chad Klinger got, I believe, back by him, as you can see up ahead. Now Eric Hutton trying to follow the two through. I think Hutt, uh, Ortega's had the best fight on the top side, but it's a losing battle no matter who you are, I think. Thinking back to Richmond with Alex Bell and the two side by side Whoa, for what boy. seemed like an eternity. There's one guy you don't want to try to pass on the inside. It's probably this two car. Well, if you do, you might just want to move him and get it over with because it will take less time. It's not something I'm sure Bell wants to relive again as Ortega is going to try the crossover, get to the left rear of Hutton's side, drop him into turn number three. He's going to be able to do just that. And Hutton's going to try to fire it in, into the corner and pinch, try to get the best run possible to get clear on the exit. But it's going to be tough to do as we're seeing Martinez about to make a pass on Reggie Ortega, not Reggie Ortega, on uh, that is 29, uh, 29. I don't know I'm breaking for Angelo Horonis. <laughs> that is for the sixth position. And this looks like Martinez starting to climb forward with well safe tires. The battle continues, and Alex Bell's going to slowly creep towards this. I think we're about to see a replay of that race, number four. He's sure hoping not. At this point, he might just <laughs> move him, seeing flashbacks. They're still side by side behind Genekin. Genekin, excuse me, gets passed by Carwell. That's for 12. Looks like Caleb Woodley hit the wall a little bit. A little right front damage. Stephen Davis, Bryce Shoemaker side by side for 19th. And Jeff Wright is wearing out the rear bumper. Joshua Banks, but can't get by. So lap after lap, this is gonna happen where you just have nowhere to go. Do you sit back a little bit here, maybe hope that the 35 has been burning a little more fuel than you and let him pit first? I don't know if it's a, I don't know if we'll see fuel be an issue if you two stop, but I think this might be a point where Jeff thinks he's fast enough to the point where he can push Joshua Banks, force him to do a mistake, maybe get close to his rear bumper, get him loosened up out of the corner, then just get by. I think at this point, he's just trying to force a mistake as that battle goes. Now a battle for third, which we haven't seen quite yet. Bailey Turner trying to fend off Chuck Sweeting for the third position. And this is what you have to do if you're stuck in the top side. You got to pinch hard. And Bailey, that's the hardest I think anyone's pinched the inside line all race long. But even then, the 75 still has good bite off the corner. You can see the surface starting to cloud up a little bit. We bring the weather up on your screen. 92 degrees on the track surface. 70 degrees in the air. We'll probably see that number on the track go back up as we oh. almost had a little bit of contact there. But you'll probably see that number approach closer to 100 degrees. As the sun comes back out, it's pretty cloudy here. Oh, Jeff Wright's got a run off of four. He's, now he's going to look to the inside for the lead. Je oh, man, Joshua Banks chopped him. I don't know how much longer the 48's going to put up okay. this. He's going to the apron. It's not out of bounds at Milwaukee. No problem. He actually tapped Banks, but I don't think it worked out in the end. That's in bounds. You can do it. I just wouldn't recommend it. A little New Hampshire line there. We saw Bailey Turner pull that off in some other leagues and made it work really well in BTDY. You know, here tonight, I wouldn't try that in three and four. I'll try that line at Oxford Plains, not really at Milwaukee Mile, as that battle's going to dissipate for now. He's got to make that ground back up, but Chuck Sweeting wants to go, and he, I think he is faster, but Bailey Turner's doing a good job defending. That battle's going on. Martinez is closing in. Hironis is bet letting Chad Klinger by for the seventh position. This is the most crazy battle right now, is that battle for third. Sweeting has the drive in, so she's, like you said earlier, the drive off, he finally is able to complete that pass, but that drive in is where he was getting his ground. But you have nowhere to go. You have to run the entire exit. 
to get anywhere, get any speed down the straightaways, and he's just giving all that back to the 24 repeatedly. Now you got the 73 of McWhorter are going to try his hand. And how about this? Alec Martinez, the car that was sitting back, probably a good, what, two seconds from the lead pack of cars? He's starting to come to life. And this is no surprise either. Last time by here in a 31.840. While behind this traffic, he still was not far off the race, top two race leaders. In fact, he was faster than Banks. He was holding up the 48 at this point. And it's now Bailey Turner who's going to be going backwards. Him and Martinez almost made contact, but that 51 is going to rocket by the 24. Wow. He stuffed it to the inside of Joseph McWhorter. I don't think that the 73 was ready for that, but he gets two for one in turn number one. Turner tries to charge off the corner. How about three cars under a blanket? Well, this is some racing in Milwaukee. I haven't seen and I, I, I'll be honest with you. I was predicting the day to be pretty quiet, single file. These guys uh, maybe reading us a bedtime story as we nod <laughs> off to sleep. Not the case. A lot of passing in the top five here. Good order. I thought he'd get back to the bottom. Didn't do so. So he's going to stick it around the top side. At least another set of corners. Does it let Chuck Sweden get a big gap away? Martinez clear. 73. Maybe trying to cross over. I think just trying to get in front of a 24, which he does. Noah Mahalski in the chat right now. I'd like to ask where you were. Did you fail to meet Tech today? Not quite sure why there's not a 0-3 on this racetrack the today. Auto, Auto Camaro is always failing Tech. He just doesn't. It just doesn't get admitted. Yeah. So curious as to what's going on. But good to see you in the chat up there on the YouTube. Make sure you hit that like button. Helps us out tremendously, buddy. We've completed 40 laps, and Joshua Banks is about to lead every single one of them. He's still under fire from Jeff Wright. As we come by to complete lap number 40, these guys are letting it all hang out there. They have pulled away 2.8 seconds. Chuck Sweeting is going to resume third. After starting outside the pole, though, Jeff Wright took over that position, and he's hung with the 35 cents. I think a lot of people are glad that Banks has held up the 48 because I think Jeff Wright would be putting a gap on this 35 if he could just get by. He's not found a way by. And he's not the type of guy who's just going to slam you out of the way. He's going to try to race you clean as long as he can. But if it gets too, too long, too, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If it gets too impactful to his race and just lose him too much time, he might have no choice at some point because a 51 will be coming. But Chuck Sweeting's also faster than both of the top two as well. The last time by at 31.8 was the leader at 31.7 for Sweeting. He's taking a little bit of a diamond approach maybe to this corner. Trying to see get that run off high the corner. End. Yeah, it's a little bit different line than the leaders are running. They're hugging the bottom of the racetrack. You ride right here on board. You can see all the way to the bottom. And now you get a look at Chuck Sweeting. He's a little bit higher, but then comes down at the exit of the corner. Right on board with him here good stuff at the front from all of these guys as you'll see him go into turn number one just to creep a little bit higher not getting to the yellow line just high enough it below enough to where he's still in that grip strip but he gets a good bite off the corner he's getting his left sides right next to that curbing on the exit of two which is important for your corner exit if you can hit that curbing basically to a t in your run at this track you're in a good spot three and four it's kind of a different story because you have no choice because it's symmetrical enough where you just got to wrap that yellow curbing and you should be all good but one and two slightly different just like a few tracks always have those slight differences that's one difference you can take advantage of is banks is going to enter low complete opposite of what the 75 is doing really and i think that might be part of what he's doing he's like, too much stress on that right front in the middle of the corner trying to get it back turned for the egos and i think that's why he's falling off a lot but Hasn't hurt him yet. He still led all 43 laps. So as this race progresses, we start to approach pit stop time. How far do these guys want to push it? That's the real question here. We split it into thirds. Makes sense tire-wise. But if you're guys like uh, Bailey Turner, maybe Joseph McWhorter, some of these guys that are falling off here, do you think that they're trying to save? I'm Bailey Turner. I come in now because he's struggling. He's back to all the way. He was, what, third. He's all the way back to the eighth position behind Eric Cutton at this point. So I don't think going long, trying a one-stop or just running long for pressure tires is going to work for someone off the pace like that. So we might see drivers, if they can't make it to 75, we shouldn't see drivers go too much longer. Gary Bergeron, the only car that has brought it down pit road. He pitted about... 13 laps ago. We missed it when the one car came down. He's back in 22nd position a lap down here. Another Someone car else. coming in. It looks like Philip Brewer. 
That's from 16th. No surprise. Fell off a cliff pretty early on. And this is a tough pit road. We haven't talked about it, but there's really no apron to use to get on pit road. It is essentially a hard left into pit road. So you've got to be fully committed. And I've seen under yellow, there's sometimes there's that yellow line on entry. I feel like I remember seeing drivers get penalties for not being under that. So that might be something drivers have to take into consideration. But I haven't ran this track in over four years. It could have changed. But we'll see if anyone else is aware of that. Stefan Davis a little off the pace here, actually going to the inside of Max Cost. It might have been the reason that he was off the pace for a moment. That last time by, about three tenths slower than a lot of this field. Cost looks like he's struggling late in this run as well. I think so, as Brewer just had a big wiggle on new tires. But yeah, these guys are pretty far back. They're honestly, they might be on the same straightaway as the leaders. As a matter of fact, they are. Uh, not too far away from lap traffic, but probably not until they get through green flag pit stops are those top two, as we got to change for third. Chuck Sweeting's gonna let Martinez through. No battle there. Well, if you're Chuck Sweeting right now, you're, you're just content with finishing this race. I think with the luck he's had all season, he's just, okay, I'm in the top five, let's finish here. That's a... That's the confidence boost that he needs. He just needs to finish races. He needs to string together five or six, and they don't have to be top fives. They could be top tens, but just finishes in general where you have a damage-free night, you run well, go back to the drawing board, then you can start racing for these uh, top threes, and, and that's really what it's going to boil down to. Oh, Bex. oh, I think Bex is pitting. He got the bumper from the 48 because I don't think Jeff Wright knew he was pitting, but the leader is the first one of any of the front runners to come down. We'll see on V-Speed Instant Replay, Banks pits, and he didn't call it, I don't think, and right, you know, just a light tap wasn't too bad, but I thought it was going to be worse. But Banks is first on the pit lane. Jeff Wright is the second race leader of the night. Alex Bell as well came down the pit. Max Cost comes down. And it looks like a lot of people are going to respond. Here comes Wright. Here comes Martinez. Goodness, he almost hit the inside wall. And McWhorter, so... Kind of what we expected, two stopping. Everyone's coming in lap 50. Here comes Ortega. Here comes the driver again, again behind him. No surprise. Pittman in as well, Caleb Weekly. So everyone's starting down this pit stop. It was about 25 laps uh, shy. And I, I was guessing on fuel distance, but I guess the tires, they're just so far gone. There's no reason to stay out there. I wouldn't think so. Chuck Sweeting's not going to go any longer. He comes to pit lane. Here comes Eric Hutton to pit. They'll hand over the lead to Chad Klinger. He'll go a little bit longer. Well, it looks like Max is going to get the jump for the race lead over the 48. And it looks like Haas is going to come out a lap down. Martinez out third. McWhorter out as well. Driver, I thought, should pit early. Bailey Turner. Turns out he's going long because he's in second. I just wonder, a lot of these guys are downshifting, and is that allowing the 24 car, because he's not doing that, to run a little bit longer run than the rest of this field? I have to wait and see. I, I just, 25 laps is a long time to stay out there, and if he's gonna try to push it to halfway, you're gonna probably see this 24 car outside of the top five when it's all said and done. Wouldn't be too surprised if we got about 1.4 seconds of fall off already as we're still waiting for the top six. Uh, plus, I believe the 99 and 66 have not came in either, but we're still waiting for a lot of drivers to come in. Klinger, Turner, Carwell, Baronis, Belke, and Shoemaker. 24 stays out another lap, as does the 09. Baronis from fourth is going to pit, so he abandons that pretty quickly as we're going to see the 48 with slightly fresher tires, but Banks did get a decent gap over the 48. Second and a half, roughly. So he goes to the inside. I believe that's the 43 of Bryce Shoemaker that Jeff Wright was just going by. So how much of a difference do you think one lap is going to make here? Uh, not very much, I would say. It makes a difference in some track position, but uh, it, I don't think that 48 is going to be able to use this too much to his advantage. I think you'll close in on the 35. I think he's faster. We saw that at the end of the previous long run. But at the very least, 
I think it might give him a little bit of a chance to make that pass complete, the extra lap. Maybe it helps him out just to get that extra drive off the corner to get to the inside of the 35 and finally make that pass. But that's as much as it's going to help him. It's not going to be a life changer, that's for sure. They're not a clinger going into turn one. He's your leader right now. Bailey Turner, Ryan Carwile, Austin Belke in the fourth position. Bryce Shoemaker still yet to come down pit road as well. And even after Shoemaker has stayed out, he's still outside of the top five with some of the guys that have pitted. So he's in an even worse situation than Turner and Klinger because he's so far behind now that he has to commit to this strategy. He needs a caution. Yeah, this is kind of most of the drivers are either maybe trying to get to one stop territory or just trying to catch a caution. It's, some, it's sometimes maybe both you kind of plan for the one stop, but you also hope to get a yellow, which would probably help you out in certain situations. He struggled. He has right front damage on the fender a little bit. Not been a great night for the 43 as Martinez goes by for position as the 75 of Sweden will be next along with Nick Warder. So just hoping to hang on to maybe some track position with a well-timed yellow, but very spread out at this point as Austin Belke finally comes down the pit. We're still waiting on Chad Klinger. He's actually clutching in. I just heard it. Chad Klinger is off, completely off the gas, completely on the clutch. And he might be trying to make this one stop. Yeah. Work. I mean, you got to try something. At this point, you're in a different situation, and this race could get away from you very easily now. One stop's probably the only option you have. I think it'll work pretty well because he's not really any slower than a 24. I don't believe Bailey Turner's doing it that much, but he is having to save a lot of fuel. He is on the clutch very early on in, in the quarter. But if it works, it's an incredible play. But he will likely be the only one trying this strategy legitimately, as well, Carwell might be too. That's actually a legit battle for second at the time being. Carwell trying to get by. Around the outside. That is tough to do, but I think it shows how much the 24 is trying to conserve off the corner on the throttle. I have to go another. Oh, McWhorter, McWhorter and Alec Martinez just spun in three. Martinez is going to spin it out, and the caution is going to come out. McWhorter booted him into turn three, and this is a huge break for Chad Klinger and Bailey Turner. sure what that was about let's go to the v-speed instant replay martinez did he hit the wall he <laughs> barely I don't, I don't if he did hit it? Oh, man that's close let's see if we can get another uh, angle of this well all i know is the 51 hit him or 73 hit him as he said over the radio he wheel hopped downshifting but uh that's a big mistake to make right behind the 51 and that really changes I, I the game missed it I think he missed it, the wall here. Let's one more time on board. It's a big break. Kind of surprised Chuck Sweeting got by. I don't know what was going on with Martinez, but he gets the boot, tries to save it, overcorrect, then jams on the brakes, and just misses that wall. He did miss it. But, uh, definitely on McWhorter, and this is a huge break for those drivers who did not pit. Klinger, Carwell, Turner, Banks, not not Banks, but the top three, a huge breaks because A, they save a set of tires because everyone else who already pit has to come back down. B, and... the position as so it doesn't seem right. Klinger either came down to let some wave arounds by, I've seen that strat before, or he entirely missed his stall. Well, he yeah, and the 71 did. Is, so that's, yeah, that's a, you know, any advantage you probably had probably goes away. So I, they, they're going to, any advantage they're about to get, they're going to lose the 0 9 to 71. So that's a shame. Right there. So he's completely missed it. Yeah, I don't even think he ever saw it. These are very tight together pit boxes. So it's not completely impossible for that to happen coming down at the same time but it's a break for banks and jeff wright who did make their stalls because now those two are not going to get the track position they were going to 
Bailey Turner was the only one of those three who was able to find his pit stall, and he should be the race leader. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break here from Milwaukee. You're watching the Saturday Night Racing League live on V-Speed. Quick commercial break. We'll be back right after this. To keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today. Or call us at 276-889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk and Enroll in Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together to create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk and Enroll in Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Back live at the Milwaukee Mile, the 24 of Bailey Turner is going to lead them into turn one after staying out for an additional 15 laps of the rest of the field. Here we go, back live in racing, and the 24 takes it into turn one. This is a big opportunity to get clean air on the nose after staying out so long. Got to take advantage of it, though. But it's really a fight for second because Jeff Wright got the begin side of Joshua Banks, and that's could be a fight for control of this race. The 35 sliding into three. Able to get the position. The 35 makes a little mistake there. And now put Jeff Wright up on the position. What could be the battle for the lead later in this run? I have to... I'm curious to tell here because we're short of halfway. So now it's a matter of you're probably going to pit and do a three stop race or a two stop race if you were on that single stop strategy. For Bailey Turner, though, staying out, not going to be advantageous. I don't think he can stretch it this far. Well, yeah. We're, well, he is going to be pit with everyone. Everyone pit under yellow. So yeah. uh, it's going to work out for him as far as he got track position over the leader. So this is huge for him. No one can make it from here. We heard how much Chad Klinger was having to save to even try to make it the halfway. He didn't get that opportunity. We'll definitely see everyone come down for a pit stop. But this does open a door. If you have to take less fuel, perhaps it opens a door for two tires. We'll just have to wait and see. But all Bailey, Bailey Turner is thinking about right now is keeping clean air on the nose and keeping track position. We'll come by for our third lead change of the day, technically. And we had a few drivers that stayed out. Fourth lead change, I'd say, total. Yes. So fourth lead change of the day. One caution here. Joseph McWhorter gets into the back of the 51 of Alec Martinez. Brings out our first caution. And so far, it's been fun to watch at Milwaukee. Top five starting to group back up. The 24 starting to feel that right side. Now, no Alec Martinez in the picture as well after the spin back to 18th. So he's going to have a struggle to get back to the front with just over 80 laps to go and a pit stop to go. But we'll see where he gets to. But right now, it is all about the 24 and 48. And Joshua Banks, Chuck Sweeting, hoping for an avenue through. So the 24, kind of similar to what Jeff had with the 35 of Banks. It looks like maybe holding him up a little bit here. He's not able to get by. And Banks now back into the picture as they come out of turn four. At what point, if you're Jeff Wright, do you move a guy out of the way? I don't know. I think if the 35 breathed down your neck, you might have no choice. But we just have not seen him willing to do that. He was stuck behind the 35 for over half that run. He just was not willing to lay the bumper. Uh, I think Joshua Banks is not 
in the same boat as the 48 as far as that. I think he'll move someone if he has to. So I feel like Jeff Wright's got to be slightly aware of that if he can't get by the 24. Well, it's brewing here, Connor, and I don't know if you notice what the screen's on right now, but I'd have to say that something's in the hunt for a repeat of what we saw here on V-Speed. These two drivers side by side, it's, it's the offset purple. I think they, they kind of find each other. Purple, black. We only just need a little bit more pink on the 15, then it's perfect. They're basically team cars at that point. Besides not being the same manufacturer, don't even think about that too much. But these two just find each other at these smaller tracks. There's no doubt about it. It's, gosh, right, it's all over the 24's bumper. Just is not willing to go to the inside quite yet. And Banks is just kind of letting him battle this 24. Travel will open up a door for the 35. There it is. Not able to get the run off the exit of two. We're looking off the back of your leader. Bailey Turner has held on, but, oh man, he slides into three, overshoots it a little bit. This could be the opportunity Jumps. all over the back bumper. Here goes Bailey. He is going to block the inside. He's going to try to look at this block. You don't think the inside's valuable? He sent them all the way to the inside wall. He missed the entry, though. Here comes Banks to the apron for a second now. This is what the 24 wants to see. Your Banks, you have to try to take it. That's the opportunity. Yeah, Jeff, he's not going to go. I would be shocked if he actually tries this pass on the outside. 24 slipping badly, though. 35 is going to try to take advantage on the inside. 48 is able to hang on the right rear. They almost made contact. Some excellent action up here for the front. We're just about halfway through this thing, and we still have no idea who's going to lead this. Coming off of turn two, Wright's got the run. Oh this is the pass of the season if he pulls this off on the outside. And I'm shocked Banks can't take advantage. Jeff's going to hold him in the pinch, running out of racetrack, side by side, door to door, officially at the line. It's going to be the 48 this time around. Lap 75, we're exactly halfway. What do you say, Connor? Let's get loud here for a few laps and. 29 graphics, gonna bring that noise. Let's do it. Let's get done. Joshua Banks trying to go back to the lead here on lap 78. Side by side coming out of turn two. Jeff Wright on the outside. Bailey Turner didn't put up much of a fight on the 35 car, but he's going to put up a fight on the 48 again. It looks like the door's opening back up. Yeah, it just shows. I think those two are part of the class of the field. Bailey just, I don't think he has the pace to battle those two. They both got around him on the outside. And I know he got the lead on the outside, but I'm kind of surprised the 48 gave the line to Joshua Banks. Banks is going to get the lead back. So maybe, just maybe. Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I thought he had him. He got a good run off the top side that time. Right, so a <laughs> job on the outside. We haven't seen anybody else do it like that. And, you know, he's not even touching the grip strip. You see the 35 kind of pushes him out of the line. He can't get the run that he wants. Oh, all the way sideways. Oh, 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 oh. He used 
everything he had there, and he really upset the right rear that time. This has kept all of our top six really stacked up as well from Banks to Chuck Sweeting. And there's a little gap to Reggie Ortega. Now the battle for third. McWhorter took a look to the inside of Bailey Turner, couldn't do so. This is a difference too. You can hear the RPMs downshifting here for the 73. And you can see it gets a little more power, a little more push on that right rear when he wants to get to the inside of Bailey Turner. Excuse me, he's gonna take it to the outside now. Doesn't have anywhere to go with it though, Milwaukee just, I mean, honestly, this track, probably one of the hardest. We've seen some hard tracks, but Kansas is another one that comes to mind where it's just really difficult. This one probably beats that by a mile. Let's but, let's put the pun in there. Yeah, no, yeah, no pun intended, but it, he, I was about to say that, but it was intended clearly, but yeah, it's hard to pass. And McWhorter's doing everything he can. He is downshifting. He's one of the drivers in the field doing it. I don't believe any of the top three are, but he's trying to get that downshift to get that jolt out of the corner to make that move to the inside. But the problem is it really doesn't work well here because you're sliding off the corner at so much. You're really doing it in fourth gear as well, sliding off the corner. So that third gear, you have to pedal it a lot more than you would in fourth gear. So it's not as advantageous as it usually would be at probably other tracks. Into the entry of one side by side briefly the there. He got to the outside. He's going to send it, but I don't think he's got enough pedal. He does not. No, I think he's going to stick it out there, though. Keep it up there because he saw the top two use it. So he's going to try to do the same thing. I, surprised a lot of people are showing restraint. I don't think he, oh, he's too wide there. Showing a lot of restraint, not wanting to put the bumper to the 24, but he almost put the left rear quarter panel into the 15's right front. This is going to give Bell a shot at him. Alex Bell, that we haven't talked too much about tonight, up seven spots as we ride on board with them into the fourth position just as they come out of turn two, side by side with McWhorter. The main thing I'm taking away here tonight is it's been clean. We've only seen the one little bit of contact there. I mean, even the passes for the lead have been clean. Nobody's moved anyone out of the way. The kind of short track mentality. With only 22, 21 cars, they actually, Chad Klinger, uh, after missing his stall, is retired for the night. But starting out here with this small of a field, there's a lot of opportunity to move guys out of the way and end their day. I mean, no one's done that yet. I quite yet. We, we'll see if anyone gets there, but you're absolutely right. I expected a little bit more of contact just because of how it, tough it is to get around someone here. But he's done a good job. Everyone's done a good job, not just one person but everyone's done a pretty good job uh, you know mining their p's and q's and keeping their bumpers on their cars alec martinez probably wished he didn't get the bumper he's one of the few he did get moved out of the way and sent and it's put him back he's back up to 14th but he restarted around all the way at the back of the lead lap at about 19th or 20th and without another yellow it's hard to believe he's going to get back into the battle for the win definitely a potential here for a top 10 though if you're the 51 machine he's got about I'm guesstimating three seconds up here to the 10th place driver, and that's Clark Ganekin in the number 27. Shout out to Dakota Floyd. I don't know if you're still in chat there. I did see it a moment ago. We were just so locked in on that battle for the lead. It has since subsided. Pull out to about a full second here for Banks, and you got to think back to when Jeff Wright came off of turn four a little sideways. That's probably the side effects of that. I would think so as the 15's up the track. It's like Chuck Sweet's gonna try to squeeze the inside, couldn't do it. But yeah, I think the 48 last time did a good job. He was sliding the right front and right rear on the initial run, but he didn't do it too much to the point where it killed his long run speed. He was still faster than the 35, but that slide was the biggest I think we've seen anyone slide all race without getting contact. He almost slammed the wall down on turn number four on that concrete barrier, so he's gonna Probably have to sit back for a little bit, trying to keep the keep the temperatures down a little bit and try to get that right rear back into a good window to operate, but definitely struggling right now. Not showing any signs of catching the 35 back just yet. But he has cleared Bailey Turner. McWhorter is he's still trying to work over that 24, and it is stacked, starting to stack up about five more cars uh, behind the 24 here. Going to be inside. He might have a look here.
has to lift a little more than he wants to. It's that downshift, I think, is the situation there. Pinned down on that bottom now as Alex Bell over the back bumper. He's going to try to follow suit. Bump drafting at Milwaukee, peaking three wide in the no. one. <laughs> oh, McWhorters. He's, McWhorters sent it to avoid it, but it kind of cost him. Bell pressured him into a mistake. Now he's got the inside oh. turn. It's the boot of a 73. I don't think he liked that slide job in the one or something, but Bell might go two for one. So Alex Bell trying to get up into the podium <laughs> position Ooh. and a slide from him as well. McWhorter <laughs> opens up the door. For, this is oh. short track racing. I, I love it. Turner's going to pit. This is pretty early, but going to try to get the jump on everyone, I guess. <laughs> McWhorter's got it. Oh, Chuck Sweeting sliding in turn number one. He's, He's going to around. Tega. Caution. And it's going to come yeah, out. Yeah, it's got to. Oh, where's ba Let's see if Turner stays on the lead lap here. This could really benefit him again. Let's see what the 35 does. If I was 35, I'm booking it to lap him. <laughs> he's going to be on the lead lap, and you know what? He's going to cycle to the race lead again. That wow. is unreal. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. you got to be kidding me with the strategy working out, but you got to be kidding me with Chuck Sweeting's luck. I had a good run last week. Caught up in a little bit of an incident. I think his car will be fine for now. And it just figures. He speed into replay. Kind of looked away from this. Oh, he yeah, just slept on his own. Yeah, he wheel hops, and the two of Ortega know where to go. Gets a little bit of nose damage from that. I haven't heard him shifting all day. But let's see if we hear. He's no, that's just... Uh, he just... Yeah, way too deep. It's possible he... How hard it is to turn these cars. It's possible these guys are using a lot of rear brake. Like you said, that could have been a case where he might have locked up the rear brakes and it just spins when that happens. But take a hit him. I don't think they have too much damage. They should be fine to continue, but Sweeting loses track position. And everyone else gets, I believe, their second. No, this is going to be their third set used of fresh tires. And if you're Bailey Turner, you're just uh, smiling ear to ear right now. I'd have to say <laughs> that the 24 car lucked out on that one. Goodness, I don't even know what to think. We'll see if he makes it a hat trick. Banks is out of pit road first, and right Bell McWhorter and Angel of Aronis out there. Yeah, I saw a little physicality there on pit road. I think we uh, deem worthy of going back and taking a look at. It looked like someone. It's very tight. We'll see. Well, first off, Martinez. Someone's in Martinez's box, but I guess it was legal. Martinez comes out. Ooh, yep. A little bit of a boot. He almost <laughs> put him in a tire bundle because yeah. that pit wall juts in. That was tight. That is, I just, I just, how do you do that? How do you time that, Bailey? I don't know. Let's pull him up here and find out. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. I think he drops some roll bar padding to get a caution. Bailey, Turner, Bradley Cooper, Connor Horn, the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you guys. Hey, you're smiling ear to ear right now. You just lucked out on probably the craziest caution ever. How does it feel to be back up here in the lead? Yeah, I think that's two cautions that uh, I think things have worked out in my favor. Last time, two guys missed their stall, and I was the leader. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I have absolutely awful long run speed here, so uh, you know, just trying to do everything I can to uh, get track position and yeah, you know, hope for a caution. So so far, that's worked out twice, and uh, yeah, gonna try to do the same thing here. Well, if it works out a third time, I want you to go to your nearest gas station and buy a scratch <laughs> off and you're buying drinks, okay? I think at that point I probably used up all my luck, so, <laughs> but yeah. All right, we'll wait and see, man. Hey, appreciate your time. Good luck out there and see what you got. Thanks, guys. Bailey Turner, your current leader here for this restart. It's no stranger to these restarts. <laughs> he's got to stick out. Yeah, he's got to stick out another restart. Last time he kept the lead for a little while, but like he said, and I tend to agree with, the speed's not the best tonight, especially the long run where he dropped back outside the top seven or eight. So we'll see what he can do. I think the best bet for him is getting short runs to the end, but even then the 48 and 35 used that outside to get around him last time by. You know Bailey's going to be protecting the bottom once again, so he's just got to find something here if he wants a chance at winning this race because I don't think 
He hasn't shown enough to hold off the 48-35 quite yet. Here we go, Saturday night style. Pace car about to be out of the way for the fifth time today. Fourth time, rather. Three flags out, we're back underway at Milwaukee. Banks did not get going there on the restart. That's gonna open up the floodgates as we come out of turn two. You can see them all three wide here coming off of the turn. Heronis has to back Ooh. out of it. Thrown is backed out, or he just barely cleared Reggio Ortega, but the 40 gets the second bell, has completely missed the corner with the 29 of Veronis. They are way up the track. Now we're three wide again. Ortega, oh, Ortega. On its, oh, and the 27 goes around. They're crashing. Maybe not too much of a crash, but the caution's out again. Philip Brewer hit the wall, and I thought they were all wrecking, but somehow only one car went around and all that, and it's Clark Ganekin making his series debut. No damage, but a tire set somewhat wasted. In speed instant replay, Ortega gets sideways, and it's just a chain reaction. He slams on the brakes to avoid hitting anyone and just spins himself. I think Brewer hit the wall trying to avoid the 27. Gosh, I don't know how Reggie saves this. Oh, man. Yeah, he pounded the wall, avoiding, so he actually got the worst of that. Martinez did a good job slamming on the brakes as well to avoid that. That could have been so much bigger than it ended up being. Wow. That's just that check up there on that transition to the racetrack. That's what caused all. This helps. I mean, if you're if you're Turner, huh? yeah, no, no, we're not pitting. No, don't kid yourself, guys. <laughs> don't kid yourself. <laughs> this is that's what yeah, that's what Bailey Turner wants, though. He needs yellows in a quick manner. Lap at, like every five ten yeah. laps. I think that's what he's going to want because he knows he can't win a long run battle with the guys behind him. Yeah, he needs to narrow this race down to maybe twenty to go before he's going to be confident enough to to hold on to this lead. It's about 16, 17 laps, I think, that he was able to put up. 18 here total. I'd say probably about 14 on the last one. Yeah, he's he's gonna be good enough. If we have 15 to go, I think he can hold on. He can push it. Jerry Bergeron got the lucky dog out of that. So besides Chad Klinger, that is everyone still running and everyone, all 21 cars still running back on the lead lap with the addition of the one car. So we cycle it back up. We're going to group these guys back up too wide. The fresh tires, a little loosey-goosey for the two, and the 27 spins around. Race recap up on your screen. Three cautions, seven lead changes. I think we're going to put that lead change up in the double digits before this thing's all said and done. I would not be the least bit surprised if one of those two behind the 24 car get back around and start fighting amongst themselves. We don't know what exactly Joseph McWhorter can do from fourth either. Eric Hutton's gotten himself up to the fifth position out of nowhere. He started 10th, and I feel like this is his first time into the top five. It's one, probably two to green at this point. If not, we'll just go another lap, no problem. Because we're gonna restart just under 50 laps to go. So Connor, you take away all the things that we talked about at the beginning of this race, all the factors of who's going to double pit, who's going to single pit. We had guys trying the strategy. We had guys miss their pit stalls. Now we have cautions that we didn't really see at all in the first, what, 50, 65 laps or so. All those strategies completely out the window. I believe so. I think everyone's going to make it at this point, uh, no doubt. So... The only one who might be in jeopardy would be Bailey, but I think with the caution laps, he should be able to make it 60 laps on the tank. As looks like he's going to pick the outside here to give Jeff Wright the bottom. We'll see how that works out. I think this is a play to let, keep the 35 boxed in more than anything. But yeah, all the strategy, one stop, two stop, uh, out the window. We should be going to the end on this set of tires if it goes green. But everyone has a set of tires left in the pits. The only question is if we get a late yellow, how hard is the pass? Are you putting that set on or are you taking it 
over next week all the way out to Iowa. I say all the way out. It's not far away from this track, but you might be taking a set of stickers with you. So I know nothing about weather or sunlight, apparently. Track temperature has dropped about five, six <laughs> degrees since we last talked about it, and the sun's out, so. We're not a, we're not a weatherman, that's for sure. We're definitely not a weatherman here, but I'll commentate on this racing, and that's what I know, and I figured that we're about to see one hell of a show as we get set to go back green. Race car out of the way, back live and racing at Milwaukee Mile, and a great restart here for Bailey Turner. What he wants to see is that 73 race, Jeff Wright. I, I think it might have been a better restart for the 73. They're banging doors a little bit in the background, but McWhorter, real shot to get second if he can hold around the outside. This has not been a good jump for Joshua Banks. But I think Bell let him in, chopped the nose of the 88. Is this gonna let Turner get away in the battle for seconds on? Want to move there off of turn four, but McWhorter's going to fight back again on the turn one. Almost three wide offset, running the apron for the 35. Gets a little loose to the inside now, McWhorter. Bailey Turner held him off for this long. He still has 47 laps to go when they come off of this turn. Oh, bank, or Jeff Wright really washed up the track. I think he's pushing hard, trying to get them at 24 before the 35 closes back in, but it might be too late. Banks is clear for third. McWhorter could not take advantage of that good restart, so he almost got second. He might go back to the fifth position here. Here comes Alex Bell. Last time by a tenth, not even a tenth, a couple hundredths of a second slower for Bailey Turner. But now Jeff really turning up the heat. Deeper into the corner, and he just has, he's just better all around the track, really. Hard for the 24 to compete. McWhorter sliding out of turn number four. That gives the position to Bell. Here comes Hutton to take fifth away, possibly. Banks looking to be inside of Jeff Wright. He is there on the bumper, trying to keep pace with the 48 before he makes a move on the 24. And the last time we saw the 24 car in the lead, that's kind of what happened was Wright started to race with Turner and Banks benefited from all of it. Ends up getting a two for one and takes over the lead. He's no stranger to this situation, but he has to plan it accordingly. I think Jeff learned a little bit from that last run that he's not gonna push the issue until he knows he can oh, make man. it clear. Banks really pushed the center on the high line. It actually almost worked to get to the right rear of the 48. Jeffrey's got to calculate what he wants to do here because you don't want to sit behind the 24 and let the 35 have first dips, but also you need to pass the 24 quick enough to where you can hope to hold up the 35 a little bit. He got too wide out of the corner, though. Here comes Banks. Off the back of your leader right now, and this is what he wanted to see, but he wants to see it a little bit longer, probably for the next 30, 40 laps. These guys could use their stuff up. Turner knows that he's not as fast on the long run, and that 35 has definitely been the one to beat. We'll see what happens here. They both had to go to be outside the 24. I don't know if Banks is going to want to have to do that again. He almost put the bumper to the 24. He didn't get a good run. Here comes Jeff Wright. He's going to maybe look to the inside. Yes, he will. Banks drives it in a little bit deeper into one, but does still allow the 48 car to use that apron. No drive off there for Wright. They come out of turn two. Changes the line in the 35. It gives the advantage to Turner. He's going to get the run off the corner down the back stretch. And I think the best thing Bailey Turner wants to see, he wants those two to battle as much as possible. If it means backing up the 35 into the 48, vice versa, you got to do everything you can because you know you're not going to beat him up here speed. You got to get a little bit cute with your race car. But Banks is going to go back to the outside. Same move they both did to the 24 last time this happened. And Turner's loose out of the corner, and he's got no run out of the corner. How hard can Bailey Turner fight this is the question. He's got a, fighting it pretty good. Got a good run off the corner. Jeff Wright's just watching him race. I think he wants to save his tires while this happens. Oh, I think we got a crash. Turn four, Stephen Davis spins, cautions out. Did Joshua Banks get the lead? And this is a big crash out of four. Yeah, 
That will be good for him. He gets control of the restart, but the 66 is unfortunately, it looks like he's going to be the second retirement of the night. It does look like he has the race lead. Beast beat instant replay. Getting a little bit of a workout tonight, surprising to me. Davis off the corner, just loses it. And, ooh, pretty decent hit. Yeah, that's pretty light contact for the engine going. Really never seen it that light of contact blow it, but clearly we saw the black smoke come out. Ooh, decent hit, don't get me wrong, it just usually takes a lot more. open. Don't expect anyone to really pit. Never mind. Everyone's going to come down. This should be our last set. As we'll look at this real quick. I don't think he downshifted out of the corner. Kind of shocked everyone's going to come down to pit as we'll cut back to live. Almost everyone comes down to take their final set of tires. One driver who didn't was Alec Martinez. race off pit road. I think Bailey Turner got back in front of Jeff Strokinex. He did. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is something. We got, I believe, three drivers staying out here. But watch this race off pit lane. Sometimes number one stalls is a little bit of a disadvantage. It's right there, the timing line, but the timing line's not right there. You got to go out to it from number one stall, and Turner speeds up and just gets the nose in front of Banks. And, notably, didn't even notice that happen live. Alex Bell got in front of Jeff Wright. To keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today. Or call us at 276-889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk and Enroll in Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together to create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk and Enroll in Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Introducing Track kind of corked in the bottle on the bottom line. Banks sends it in the inside in turn number three, but he could not get to the inside. Bell's up the racetrack. Bailey Turner gets through all of this, of course. Bell second to get through, and now it's Martinez in the lead. They're three wide down the front stretch. McWhorter slapped the wall. No, 
that was Bryce Shoemaker who slapped the wall as now the 27 gets split. Ooh, Martinez just got the bumper from Bailey Turner for the race lead. Bailey got chopped into three. He was not taking that. 24 to the front again. Let's see if Martinez responds. 43's in the wall again. What the crossover he tried to make there. He tried the Van Gisberg and move. Gosh, right there, we saw it there. He tried to get to the inside in turn two. But right here, as Martinez starting to fall back now, he chops the nose to get to the bottom. Bailey had none of it. He had to go. He, Jeff Wright trying to go. I thought he gave the 73 the bumper, but McWhorter, McWhorter got held up by the 51. Now he's on the outside. They're both trying to fight to be the first one by Martinez on older tires. This is just a, oh, we got a slider in the back. Caleb Weekly's in the grass. He saved it. Well, right, so he will keep it green. They keep it straight. Jeff Wright's still trying to fight to get by Alec Martinez. McWhorter beats him to the punch. How much this race is flip-flop? Not only is Bailey still leading, Alex Bell's gotten the second as now Martinez moved up a little bit by the 48. Well, they're gonna, he's going to have to get by the 15 first. You got to try to save what you can, but you can't drop back too far to where Alex Bell can get to your bumper, or let alone Joshua Banks. We saw the 24 is very willing to put the bumper to anyone for the lead. So I'm sure the 15, Alex Bell, Joshua Banks, they will note that, and they will be fully prepared to give the same treatment back. Uh, we're still seeing Alec Martinez. He's trying to fight for any position he can. This, like we said, this is a play really hoping for a caution with around in the in with I think he needs around 10 more laps and then he would want a yellow, but not there quite yet. Oh, I'm caution spin Caleb Weekly. Yep, couldn't save this one. Well, now Martinez. He, Be okay, but it's not going to have that much of an advantage on tires. But you can't really risk staying out and going green. So he might be in a box that he might have to pit. Did not think the V Speed Instant Replay would get a workout tonight. He had a slide in turn one. We didn't catch. He did save it. This is the same thing as we saw with the 66. Minus the inside wall hit that took him out. You know, the last two races before tonight had a combined three cautions. Tonight we have five. Still a far cry for Bristol. Everyone fakes in the pit lane, and they are going to pit. Okay, they had more tires than I thought. They had five sets of tires. My goodness, my apologies. I kept thinking they were out of tires, but everyone looks to be taking their final set of tires, but this is a split strategy much, much more this time. Oh, Jeff Wright missed the spokes. Oh, my goodness. It is unraveled for Jeff Wright. Looks like Joshua Banks took two tires to get out in front of everyone as well. Looks like Chuck Sweeting got out second. 
on four tires. This is uh, really, the quarter is pretty jumbled up at this point. Backs out. Yeah, Sweden got it. Bell Turner. This has really not worked out for the 24. It sounds like there's a lot of people had penalties for passing under yellow. So something happened, some penalty got handed out. So this might have to get sorted out pretty quickly. So we don't know what the order is going to be back there. We do know McWhorter, Ortega, Horonis, Pittman, and Philip Brewer, and Jeff Wright in sixth have all stayed out. So that's the top six have stayed out. I make that top eight. I don't believe Belkey and Bergeron came down. But then you got Joshua Banks. Currently ninth. It looks like he'll turn the eighth. The 48 is going to come down. Nope, he faked. He got me. I'll admit it. He got me. But the problem with Banks here, he got track position over the guys who pit, but he's all alone on two tires. So he take one to green. So that I'm not a big fan of because he's alone. And I don't believe, I don't believe that's going to work well for him. Oh, they're all over each other back there. Bell got the boot. Sweeting's under him. They're three wide going past the 89. Uh oh, man. Whoa, Brewer got loose. Oh, the crash to 27's around again. Caution's out again. Surprise, they were all over each other. I don't know how they didn't wreck out of turn two, to be honest. Let's get another replay. Oh, he got loose. 43 did hit him, but I don't think Bryce Shoemaker could do much about that. Get a better look. Belky was struggling. Up the track. I think he just got loose. Lightly taps the inside wall. That won't do any damage. But he will lose any track position he had. And we get yet another reset. And we'll get going once again under 20 laps to go. And Joseph McWhorter got a good jump there. Andrew Horonis got the second. So he will restart on the front row. Now Ortega will be third. And Philip Brewer in fourth out of nowhere. Struggling early. Fell way back. Has a chance at a decent result here if he can hold on. He also hit the wall after one of the cautions, but up the fourth. Jeff Wright faking again. Nope, this time for real. So the 48 comes down from the fifth position. He dragged Gavin Pittman with him and Jerry Bergeron. And that is about it. So only four cars, including the 27, taking what could be their last sets of tires. 
And so for those of you that haven't heard me for the past 30 laps, I was muted this entire time. I uh, had a little coughing fit there. And uh, I forgot to turn it back on. Yeah, for 30 laps, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. No. I didn't know I was doing solo. <laughs> you were solo there for, for uh, the last restart, for sure. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Got a word from uh, Adam Baker. So, yeah, welcome back, everybody. We had a solid restart there. I was... I was explaining earlier that uh, the top two on that last restart with Verona, or Ortega and McWhorter were looking for their second win this season, but how about a guy that has only won in the Clash race? Look for his first regular season win, that's a 29. He's been fast, but it seems like he's been outshined by most of the drivers we usually see at the front of the field but he's, had print, he's been solid, he's hung around, and he's put himself in a pretty good position right now. Probably gonna, these boat, all these drivers are probably gonna have to fight off fresher tires to the end. Joshua Banks on two tires, did get up to fifth. Chuck Sweeting up to sixth. He's recovered uh, from his incident with the two of Ortega. Really no, no telling what could happen because we've had a big string of yellows that's kind of not allowed the field to really jumble jumble out of sorts and get back somewhat more sorted so we could see a string of yellows to the end but if we do get a run to the end those drivers on older tires are probably not going to be in a great spot uh, it could be mcwarder it could be the 73 the 2 and the 29 of the end but this goes green the 35 75 and 15 would be the three i would be looking at as might get two to green here it might be one to green as We'll see what Jeff Wright can do on fresher tires all the way at the back now is yes, it is one to green and Josh McWhorter picks the outside. And so for McWhorter, five top fives, eight top tens on win this season. He's got the bonus points for leading laps. He's only four out from the lead and Jeff Wright on that last restart, just not in a good situation. He falls back, he brings it back down pit road and he'll be restarting back in the 18th position. This is really for McWhorter, the picture-perfect moment to take that lead back in the points. But Angel Moronis, he's going to try to throw a wrench in this and change the situation. He has a lot of cars behind him that have the potential to snag this away. We saw it at Rockingham when the 73 was dominant. And when it came down to the very end, Banks found his way to the front. This is going to be important for Moronis to get a good timing and maybe try to stick to the inside of McWhorter in the turn number one. Restart back underway into that restart zone. McWhorter does get a good jump. Brewer's going to follow suit onto the outside. Ortega oh, peaks to the block. bottom. And three wide here into the entrance of one. Bell tried to put the block on Bailey Turner. Turner got through the gears much better. He got the spot because of it. Bell's loose. They made him. Martinez made contact. McWhorter got away, though. Good restart. He goes Banks three wide to the inside. Ortega sliding up the track. This, he kind of scared Ortega into a mistake. It's going to work well for Banks. He's up to third. He might get second. Going to work really well for him here as he put the ticker back up on your screen. Baronis, four three wide, over and over and over. If you're Turner, you're shooting the gap. You're taking any hole you can find. There's only 15 to go. Taxi Apron gets a little loose there. Now the two of Ortega is going to sell out in fifth. Single file for the lead. And now, these are two drivers, Banks and McWhorter. They will get physical for the race win if they want to, but I don't know how much McWhorter can do on old tires. Even on only two tires, Banks looks much faster at this point in the run. McWhorter's going to be hanging on. Roger Ortega put the block on Bailey Turner. I don't think it was a block. He's just trying to get the inside of Philip Brewer for the fourth position. And Banks is already there. Fifteen laps to go when they cross the line this time by. Joshua Banks all over the back bumper. Going to give him the move. He's going to try it. Order he almost did it. Oh, sideways Brewer off the corner. How did he save that? That checked up the 75 to Sweeting, but no one hit the 44 somehow. McWhorter up the track, kind of shadowing the 35 of Banks. He's going to get a better run out of the corner. He's going to get to the inside, maybe. He will. I think McWhorter can fight this one. Just 
try to get the right rear. 35 just has more grip. But does he want to return to favor with the bumper? If he wants to, he could do so right here, but I'm not sure. I think if 35 gets away, it's over. Max out of it here, and now Joshua Banks sets sail. Barring that we don't have another yellow, this could be the move that wins the race for Joshua Banks. Angela Hironis back in third. Bailey Turner, Alec Martinez. How about Martinez? After all, he's been through here today, working on the top five. Let me take that after uh, how up and down this day has been. But Banks is going to try to put any gap on everyone he can. The next driver on fresh tires is Bailey Turner in fourth. He's leading a line of fresh tires, Turner Martinez Bell. Jeff Wright's back up to the 10th position through all this, and he has the freshest tires in the field. I don't think it'll make a difference again to the lead, but he'll be able to recover some out of this day. I mean, how about the 48 car? He's going to mitigate this damage. It's still looking like a points lead change right now. There's still enough positions. McWhorter has been able to lead some laps, and they're tied there. Either one of them are going to lead the most. That goes, that honor goes to the 35 without a doubt. The people definitely start pulling away even more as we got to change for third. Hironis up the track. Bailey Turner has 11 laps to go if he wants to do anything on his four fresh tires with us with the 35. He's got to get McWhorter at some point first, though. He ran a 30.82, that is slower than Banks. He is matching the speed there. However, he was passing with that 30.8. Now he's in clean air. Let's see what he is this time by. Clean air air, not too clear. 15 car, going to get inside the 29 car, turning at 973. Still slower than the 35. This said make quick work of McWhorter if he wants any realistic shot at this. Talking about 12 laps, probably about 10 under green on the difference in tires. And that two tire stop. It's a big green move there. The 35 did it well. 88 and 40. Oh, we got a spin, crash out of four. That's a big hit. Bryce Shoemaker and Clark Genekin in his debut. He's gotten in almost everything tonight. And we're going to have another restart. And this has finished off the, the 43 car for the night for sure. Hold everything, it's all changed again. There is only one person who didn't want to see that yellow, and it's the race leader. Now what do you do? Because he got the border, he still has tires, but I don't think he pit under five to go. We'll look at the, another v spins in a replay. Ooh. On so back I, with the 13 initially, and he came down into the 27. Yeah, three wide. You think there's enough room here, but that exit tightens up because you need all of the racetrack. And I don't think weekly expected to be three wide. Neither I don't think that I don't think anyone really knew they were three wide, but they barely were. Thirteen loose, didn't go up to the wall, knocked Bryce Shoemaker down into the twenty-seven, and they both hit the inside wall hard. That inside wall not very forgiving today for sure. Yeah, it's popped a lot of engines, and surprisingly, and I mean that, that light team. touch we saw from uh, I believe it's Stefan Davis. Let's see, do we have pit stops? We do! We have a lot of pit stops here. Maybe not too many, but the 73, the 24, Martinez, Hironis, Ortega, everyone, a lot of the people who had a set left came down. Oh boy. I don't know if there's enough time. Oh boy. I don't know either. McWhorter's going to get out first. They're, I mean, they're back in 10th position. That's, that's a lot of cars to pass. And there's not going to be a lot of time. time to do it. This might be... I don't know. We'll have to see. 
Alex Bell. I'm trying to see. I don't know who has the freshest tires. Banks obviously still only has two. Everyone else behind him. Last time they pit definitely had four. This puts this 48 Jeff Wright. He has fresher tires into four ahead of him. He's going to be in fifth. Man, I did not think this would be this wacky of a, a race. It's flipped. How many times has this race flipped? At least four times, and it's all happened under yellow. We, we had the situation where the 24 was staying out. We had that first yellow that put them all in a good spot to put uh, Bailey Turner up front. And, and that's Turner where... comes back down by himself. We had that yellow right as that happened. He stays on the lead lap from that. Yeah. And then he kept the lead, kept the lead. Banks got it barely at some point. Then everyone started doing different strategies. Had Martinez stay out. Turned the lead. Missed, missed his pit stall. That too. And then after Martinez stayed out, the Turner got back to the lead. But then we had, yeah, Jeff Wright missed his stall. Then we had more people stay out where the 73 of McWhorter had the lead. And all of a sudden, it's flipped back to Joshua Banks. But now we have more drama under five to go with different tire strategies. And I'm not going to say who has tires left and who doesn't because we learned two cautions ago. I don't know. <laughs> because I was miscounting that they had an extra set of fresh tires. I don't think many have another fresh set. It looks like Banks is going to take the bottom. We're going to go green with four flaps left to go. Well, this is usually the time I start a poll, but I have no other way to do this because there's so many possibilities. So we're just going to go ahead and start a question. Put that up in chat. Who's going to win this race? Go ahead and submit that. We have five laps to go. I have four to go when we take the green flag. We have the possibility for three green-white checkered attempts. Alex Bell on four fresh tires. Joshua Banks took two. They have to go all the way back to 10th position. Joseph McWhorter the freshest tires in the field. And you can't forget about Jeff Wright. He pit the caution before. His tires are fresher than the four ahead of him. Yes. A lot of different possibilities here as this pace car gets out of the way. Let's unpack it. Let's figure out who has what it takes here in Milwaukee. Green flags out. Let's see it. 24 already. Oh, three oh. wide. Oh, they're going to hit up and outside of them. They are four wide through turn number one. And they're going to make it work for now. And they're side by side for second. That's what Banks wants to see, but Bell's going to get clear for that second position. Up to three laps to go. Martinez is trying to make up ground. He and Turner are going to battle each other and probably ruin each other's chances. Jeff Wright's up to fourth. Martinez almost slammed the inside pit wall. They're banging doors. Weekly just got shoved up the track. 22 is around out of turn number two. No caution yet. Now it's out. And we are in green-white checker territory just like that. Oh, someone just slammed the opening down the back straightaway. Austin Belke, under caution, gets completely destroyed. What in the world? That was under caution. This is the initial incident. 22 Gavin Pittman gets turned. Somehow everyone missed it. Then Belke, we all slow down for the yellow. He turns in front of Ortega. He turns him into the opening down the back straightaway. What a vicious hit. Unbelievable. And we just got word. Jeff... Uh, Bailey Turner is getting a black flag for a restart violation. Well, that's a lot to back up here, so let's uh... <laughs> rewind. What happened there? So, I might have backed it up a little too far, but let's go. Oh, my goodness. Let's we'll ride it's... this one out. I... Yeah, time Dude, on he's the deep in this field here. He restarts 11th. We'll get there. Lucky Dog goes to a 27, by the way. He's going to be he's the last driver running at this point. Belke, Shoemaker, Stephen Davis all out of this race. Leaving us 18 cars. 
Restart violations here is a lane change before the line. Yes, and we, we did see he got to the inside pretty early. Chad Klinger and Jeff Wright are talking about it in the admin chat right now. We'll see if this gets reversed or not. But Chad Klinger is the one who made the call. Get going about now. That is... That's pretty... That's close. That's pretty close. It, it looked like he started the process of pulling out to the bottom before the line. God, I don't know how they made four wide work. So that's what they're looking at right now. Now Bryce Shoemaker, another admin, joins the channel to discuss this. It's tough because he's trying not to slam to the rear of Jared Bergeron. So that's where that penalty is being called currently. Still no final decision yet. Nope, he was given an EOL penalty, so I believe it is final. And Turner's going to lose all that track position that he worked for on that restart. So now the first green-white checkered attempt for the 35 of Joshua Banks. Now we're throwing haymakers and Hail Marys. It's just all bets are off. You're not looking to save tires. If you have anything for this 35 car, a bumper, wouldn't put it past some of these guys behind, you know, Jeff Wright back into the picture now. He'll be starting, I would assume that Banks is going to start on the outside to try to box him in, but I, I don't know, man. It's, we, we still have another chance. I don't think he, I doubt he wants to see, the best thing he can see is Alex Bell, his teammate, restarting second, but he does not want to see multiple attempts because the more attempts, the more likely that 51 gets a row forward. He's on the freshest tires in the field. He got up to sixth. He's not out of it, but he probably needs another restart. It's going to be hard to go sixth to first if he only has this two-lap sprint. Bell did not get the best of jumps last restart either. But he was able to get by Hutton. Bell needs to time this perfectly. Try to get clear for a second before turn one, or maybe even stay on the outside of Joshua Max. Here we go. Into overtime at Milwaukee. 150 miles wasn't enough. Let's make it 154. Pace car out of the way. Green flag is out. We're back underway. And the 35 and the 15 side by side in a one. Bell really laid back in turn number four. And he got a good jump, but he wasn't far enough alongside to make it work. They doored for second. Hutton's loose. Bell's back clear. They're three wide in the back. They might go four wide again. They will, and they do. That's not going to work. It is so far. They're still four wide as Banks is away with the lead. Hutton slides. We're going to make it to the white. White flag up in the air for the final time today. We're going to go around Milwaukee. Joshua Banks has the lead. Alex Bell going to try to power move into one. Not enough here on the exit. Jeff Wright has snagged away the third position. Scratch that for the points lead change. Oh. Jeff Wright onto the podium. Big dive for the Banks machine. Big dive for the 15. He just wasn't close enough. And off a turn four for the final time. It's going to be Joshua Banks in the 35, getting the win. Oh, and they crash. Bergeron gets turned across the line. Bailey Turner crashes. Huge crash into turn number one. The 13's in it. I believe the 63 got in it as well. And Eric, Eric Hutton spun Philip Brewer after the line. Chuck Sweeting wrecked out of turn number two. This was the last track I expected to see this much craziness, but it got crazy, and that was a hard hit for the 13 as well. Goodness, a lot to unpack there. There's the 75's crash, and he killed the inside ball in turn number two. Looks like Hutton was mad at that bump and run by the 44. They door to the line. But I saw the one get turned. Looks like Bailey Turner got into him and put him into the wall. Breck Max Cost collected the 13. And then a little further up than that, the 44 got an unfriendly boot from the 88 right there. Not happy. The 88 was not happy with how he was raced into turn number three. Let's back that up a little bit more. 
crazy. I really, I just can't believe how crazy this race got. Philip Brewer gets away with an eighth place finish after this. Joshua Banks burns it down. The flag looks to be inside. 88 gets clear of him. 44 gives him a boot. 88 kind of puts him in the grass. It's, and it's, it's kind of just racing, ain't it? Yeah. It's a bump from run. Everything in turn one, it's not really racing. Here's the response. I think, I don't think, I don't think Philip Brewer will be invited to Raising Canes after the race. <laughs> well, there it is. Joshua Banks through all the carnage and all the chaos, the things that we had to unpack here today in the Saturday Night Racing League, race number 12. Post race interviews with your top three. We're going to try to catch up on everything that's happened in the last uh, 15 minutes or so. But you're watching Saturday Night Racing on V Speed. Back with more after this. Drivers, start your printers. To keep pace with the ever changing landscape of marketing and advertising, let Clark Print Shop help you spot the trends and keep you in front of the pack with all your color printing needs. From business cards to invitations, menus to mugs, we can print anything you need on paper or your choice of over 3,000 promotional items. Visit www.clarkprintshop.com to browse our online catalog and place your order today or call us at 276 889-3426. For a limited time, use the code iRacing for 23% off your first purchase. The staff at Clark Print Shop looks forward to handling all your color printing needs. In the heartland of our country, something magical is happening. At Walk and Rolling Costumes, we know the power of community, of hands coming together, create wonders. These costumes are symbols of love, compassion, and inclusion. Your hands can craft dreams. Join us at Walk and Rolling Costumes Build Events and be a part of something extraordinary. Introducing Tractor USA, the best way to buy and sell premium ag and construction equipment. Tractor USA was designed to be straightforward, simple, and affordable with zero commission and live auctions every week. Tractor USA auctions offer the finest selection of pre-owned tractors, combines, and other ag and construction equipment from across the United States and the world. Simply go to TractorUSA.com to get started today. Lap traffic out of the way. It's between these two. They're even for the white flag lap. This race still very undecided. Bradley had the lift. Big run for McWhorter. This is going to be his chance. They're running out of time and they know it. The bottom surge is hitting inside. Now pulls even with Hunt off the of turn number two. 900 horsepower at their feet. That was a huge run for Bradley. He got back the advantage, but here comes a big diamond water. Might just try to run him out of room here. Oh, they put him in the wall. They're going to crash. They both crash. Here comes Ray Massey. Ray Massey's going to win it. back here live from milwaukee and we went into overtime tonight 154 laps have concluded final results up on your screen and it's going to be joshua banks who gets the win alex bell his teammates going to finish in the second position joseph mcwarder will be your top three here today jeff wright's going to get fourth alec martinez recovers from uh, i think he went from the rear of the field three times here today after getting spun, then off cycle with the pits, he's going to get a top five. Congrats to him. Ryan Carwile, good finish here for the 71. Angelo Hironis, not had an opportunity at a top three, but he falls back to seventh. 
Philip Brewer holds on to eighth. Reggie Ortega ninth. And Eric Hutton rounds out your top ten. Stumbled up top ten, but at the same time, there's names there that did run top ten most of the day. There's some outside the top ten, though, that probably deserved it. Bailey Turner, one of those. Didn't run very well long run, but he was up there leading laps. Only gets 11th. Jerry Bergeron crashed across the line, but he did get 12th. Max Cost also destroyed his car across the line. 13th. Caleb Weekly, uh, 14th to 14th. Doesn't tell the whole story about his day. He had some spins. He finishes 14th, though. Gavin Pittman got spun out of a top 10 position late. Finishes 15th. Brandon Wallace uh, did not have the best of days, uh, but he does get 16th. Clark Ekin in his series debut, uh, not really all his okay. fault, but he, he got he got uh, hit everything but the hot dog stand there. But uh, 17th for him. Chuck Sweeting, go figure. Uh, running top 10, really top 5 most of the day. A last lap crash relegates him to 18. Austin Belke crashed late. He's the first driver other than Sweeting not to make it to the line. He finishes 19th, and Bryce Shoemaker also in a crash finishes 20th. And that final restart actually put Sweeting out of the top 5 or out of the top 10 here today. He was ahead of Angela Hironis at one point. Uh, final couple drivers here. A few DNFs in this listing as well. You have... Uh, uh, Stefan Davis in the 21st spot, Chad Klinger, who had missed his pit stall during the uh, first, I believe it was the first set of caution pit stops, and then Christopher Shea rounding out the field. We're catching up down on pit road, and uh, who, who's running here, Connor? I've completely forgot where I'm going right now, if I'm supposed to be running to third place or if that's uh, you. I got I've got McWhorter. I've actually caught him down. You can get the Joshua Banks, but I do have Joseph McWhorter in on pit road with me. Joseph, you led 13 laps, but didn't seem like you had what the 35 and 48 had today. But you were in a spot. You had a chance at the win. Just couldn't hold on. What more did you need tonight to get the victory lane? I feel like I had the pace, but I didn't ever have the track position. <laughs> And then I tried, and I tried to do what Bailey did earlier, and I, there was just too big of a difference on tires, so uh, Banks got around me, which I was expecting that. I was like, that was too big of a difference. I, I, I don't know what I need. I need to stop sucking at qualifying. That's what I need. I need to stop being bad at qualifying. I am terrible at it. It's my biggest downfall. I almost say this every single time that I'm in your guys' booth for an interview. I suck at qualifying, plain and simple. Yeah, definitely not the best of qualifying efforts, but you did manage to get to a top three after all that. And you said you thought you had something for those two that kind of dominated the race, but just didn't have track position. And we kind of went into this race thinking it was going to be a track position race. Milwaukee Mile, notorious for being hard to pass. And it's, that definitely looked to be the case tonight. Do you agree? Yeah, it definitely was. And it also didn't help that uh, when I got into the server, iRacing was having me re do like my wheel and all my buttons and stuff because i had updated something so shocker there and it was asking me for a key for neutral so i put the shifter in neutral and it's not detecting neutral but it's detecting neutral literally everywhere else but except for on iRacing so if i didn't do the exact moment that i racing you know whenever you go to downshift if i didn't hit the throttle at the perfect time when i racing showed that it was in neutral it would wheel hop and i ended up getting into the back of alex and i'm sure you guys see me slide several times and that was the issue and then i heard that some of the leaders weren't shifting so because it the shifting was working at the early part of the race 100 percent what but then I stopped shift or I stopped shifting and just stayed in fourth like I did during practice, and then I had a whole bunch more speed. But I just I I don't know. It was just a mess, and I don't know how I survived. I don't, I'm glad that I got third. I'm glad that I beat Jeff. But I think it's a moot point because I think I'm going to get five. <laughs> I'm going to think I'm going to get a five uh, 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 five point penalty for causing the caution. I don't know how they're going to deem that. I I would say it's just a racing deal, but. I don't know. <laughs> My brain's everywhere. I'm sorry. I've sputtered, but. Uh. <laughs> yeah, definitely a crazy race, and yeah, they did get a cause caution, but either way, still get the third regardless, and you'll still be pretty close to the points lead. And just two weeks' time, three weeks' time, we'll be in the chase, and you'll be in a good spot to compete for that title, no doubt. So, wrapping up here with you, do you have anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Anyone at all? 
Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank uh, Red Camel Racing. Uh, they've been an awesome partner of mine for a long time. I always mention them whenever I'm in here for an interview. Uh, so, of course, a uh, big shout out to them. Go check them out at redcamelracing.com. Uh, my sponsor, uh, Reaper Speed Labs, go check them out. They always have fast uh, uh, setups every week. Uh, so go check them out at reaperspeedlabs.com. Harpoondesign.com. Um, they make beautiful paint schemes that you see on all my teammates, me, Mark, and and John when they're here. Uh, so go check them out. They've got, I think Brantley's, I, I know I've said this a couple of times, but I think he's getting close to that 2K or is over 2K on uh, 2,000 paints now on uh, training paints. So go check them out. Go check out all our sponsors um, of the league. Um, 29 graphics. I know we got some new ones. Uh, CPS. Uh, what is that? It's the it's Clark Paint Shop, right? Yeah, Clark Paint Shop. Uh, Print. Tractor USA and uh, what is it? Clark Print Shop, I believe. Is yeah. It? Okay. Yeah, and then uh, uh, uh wheeling Walking and rolling. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I can't read tonight or speak apparently. But and you guys for putting on the broadcast. You guys, you guys are awesome. By the way, I love you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Um, the admins, all the drivers. It was an awesome night. I think even with Milwaukee Mile, that actually put on a really good race. So, um, really looking forward to going into wherever we are next week. Yeah, we definitely did not expect I me, mean, Bradley, did not expect the action we saw tonight, but you were a big part of it, and you get a P3 out of it. Yeah, four wide, too. You were a part of that four wide at the yeah, end as I, well. I didn't have a spot tonight, so literally I was yeah. just like, iRacing doesn't call when you're four wide, so I just, I didn't even know until I looked left in VR, and I saw three cars to my left, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, it was wild. Definitely looked wild for sure. You got through it though, P3. That's your sixth top five of the season. You should stay second in points. Good run, Joseph. We'll see you next week. Thank you, sir. You guys have a wonderful night. I'll see you guys next week. Yes, sir. We'll see you next week too. All right. I think Joseph McWhorter, with all due respect, I think he's our league's Kenny Wallace because he will talk if you interview him. But that's a good thing, yeah. especially if we're interviewing him for top threes every week. Bradley, I know I'm sure Alex Bell was waiting to get pulled up. He was waiting for Joseph to start to stop talking. So you got Alex Bell right now. Do I have our second place finisher, Alex Bell? And Alex, I mean, I don't want to sell this short. You got second here, but it was a quiet night for you tonight. You started mid-pack back in 12th. You found yourself in a better situation after we had those uh, plague of cautions, and then you just kind of never looked back. You you set up there in the top three, and you, I mean, walk us through this race. What were you expecting coming into tonight? Um, my expectations were super low. I have never, I don't have any memory of ever racing on the Milwaukee Mile ever. It, it I may have done a league race here years and years ago, but I've definitely never run any official races here. So the first uh, first half of the race, I was also just figuring out how to drive this place. That's why I was back there in the mid-pack not doing anything. I didn't feel confident enough to do anything. Um, but, yeah, as the race progressed on, we caught a break with some cautions, had some good pit stops, and we got a little bit more track position. And I just was able to maintain with them. It was really hard to pass here, so I really wasn't able to you know, move around my grooves or anything. But I guess I just got lucky on a few of the restarts and got up there. But once we got up there to the to, towards the front, we held on really good and... I don't think I had near as much speed as Banksy or Jeff or honestly anyone, but we, we held off them ugh, English. We had just enough speed to, to hold them off and come home second. So I'm uh, for having no expectations. I'll take second place any time of the day. That's great. Well, you're in the beer capital of the world right now. So English not making sense, makes sense. If that, <laughs> uh, if that adds up, but Alex, you, you put it on out here in the closing laps and this puts you in a situation in the points we're coming up to chase time. How, how how important was it to have a race like this where at a track you didn't expect to do well? How, how does that go into the playoffs or into the chase where your situation is? Okay, I mean, you guys have seen how the last month and a half has gone. I mean, I went about five races in a row where I didn't finish. So um, to definitely have some momentum being built back, especially here, Kansas, I expected to run well at Kansas, but uh, coming to a track that I had no experience at to be able to run good here, that gives me a lot of confidence. I can go to any track and put in a, a good enough run to hopefully be a contender for a championship. But it's really good to uh, get the season turned around, get back on the right note. I'm not sure where that puts the points at. I was hoping Jeff was going to stay further back. I know he pitted late, and I was hoping he was going to stay back there, but I think he finished third or fourth. So didn't gain many points on him and make water was up there too in the points, but we got some momentum building and uh, the chase is full of good tracks for us. So hopefully this keeps on building forward. The 15 Alex Bell 
get second place here tonight at Milwaukee. Is there anyone you'd like to shout out? I'm ready this time. I have a sponsor list He's right here him. in front of me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'd like to thank 29 Graphics, Tractor USA, you guys on V-Speed for putting on this show week in, week out, walking and rolling costumes, the Clark Print Shop, all of our great sponsors that make this league go around. Um, big shout out to my teammate, Banksy. I, uh, I've i been racing with Banksy on this service since like 2017. He's one of my best friends on this service. So uh, to finish second to him, I, I don't like finishing second, but if I'm going to finish second to anyone, it's probably won't going to be him. So big shout out to him for the win. And uh, he's actually my teammate too, and I'm the team owner. So I I got to pay him a little bit more now, I guess, but it's okay. A win's a win. So big shout out to him too. We appreciate your time, Alex Bell. Congratulations on second position. And we look forward to what you have in store for us next week, buddy. Thank you. Thank you guys. And now moving on to victory lane. And should I be running there? I, I just, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I think everybody's forgot everything. Okay. So we got 35. The only banks that you saw here tonight at Milwaukee and it's the 35 car up front in victory lane. Yep, he's in victory lane. I've got him. Joshua Banks, 85 laps led of the 154. Joshua in victory lane once again in the Saturday Night Racing League. Josh, you dominated tonight, but it wasn't an easy domination. You didn't. You led the most laps, and you led a lot on the long run we had at the beginning of the race. But this was anything but easy. You had the 48 all over you. You had drivers on better tires behind you ch trying to chase you down. But you withstood the pressure and made the passes when it mattered most. How tough was this one to get? Uh, it, it was tough. I was a little worried if this thing was going green because we were getting in that mode of running green flag and having that green flag pit stop. I was like, this is going to be tough holding Jeff off. He's definitely better on that long run and uh, making me use my stuff up more than I thought I was. So uh, I was getting a little nervous there, but then when starts cautions started falling and then strategies were changing left and right, that's where things got a little hectic because everybody, you know, we'd pit and then track position would change up because either people stayed out or because pit crew sucked tonight or something. So <laughs> Uh, but it, it was tough, dude, but it, it was fun. Um, granted, you could pass. You definitely can pass here. It, it's definitely dope, tough, but if you can drive it right, uh, it, it can be some good fun racing for sure. We definitely saw that. We saw some wild racing, but we did see good clean racing, especially for the lead. Bailey Turner got the lead two times by surprise in front of you in the 48. You had the 40 at one point, get by you, then get by the 24, but you eventually got the lead back every time. You had the 51 to get by, and then you had to withstand the pressure on somewhat older tires at the end. What part of the race was the hardest for you? Because I will be honest, I thought the 48 getting by you and then Bailey Turner, that could have been it, but you were able to get by him. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd say that where I was running third and, and following Jeff and Bailey, I... would wasn't sure my pace was when if they like the first run I knew they were saving you know so the pace wasn't really truly there of what they could do so when they got in front and the pace was picking up a little bit I was a little worried about okay am I just showing not showing speed and just burning my stuff up or am I actually showing pace and luckily uh, we were able to show it near the middle of that run and start running them back down and make passes and surprisingly I was surprised the top worked I saw Jeff did that with Bailey and I was like okay well work it ourselves because I knew I could roll pretty good and it made it work and then even the bottom work so I just uh, knew that if I could just stick with them and maintain the tires we can make a shot for passes but that, that probably was the toughest was just being right there not sure whether I would be burning my stuff up more than them or whether I'd be actually making it around them again and luckily we were able to do that. Yeah, definitely able to do that, able to hold off your teammate Alex Bell, and no one else really got close to you on the green-white checkered attempt, so a great win for you. Gives you some well-earned points. You might advance, well, you might stay fifth in points, but you close up on everyone ahead of you, especially Noah Mahalski, who didn't make it tonight. Another win on, on the season. Anyone you want to shout out sponsor-wise at all? I mean, I mean, you guys up in the booth, obviously, and what you do on the broadcasting and everything, you and Bradley, um, doing an awesome job and uh, shout out to our advents tonight doing an awesome job again with this league and you know doing a great job with what they do and putting it on and our sponsors for the league we got you know 29 graphics uh, I'm trying to remember them all tractor something oh, gosh I'm terrible with sponsors <laughs> um, let's see Clark paint shop we got tractor USA and then we got WRC uh, costumes we got them all on board for the league and appreciate them hopping on and then uh, for the my car, you know, AB Motorsports, our team there, and Maco Tools. Uh, shout out to everybody there, and thanks for being on the car for AB Motorsports. So, um, 
just hopefully we keep this momentum going. I like where we're going, but next couple weeks, it's going to be tough. Iowa's all right. Atlanta, I'm really, really nervous about because that's not one of my best tracks because it's a tire saving track. So <laughs> we'll see, um, but we'll do our best and see if we can get this car up front and get good finishes. Joshua Banks, that is going to end up being your fourth win in this uh, league, your third win of the season, your third win on a track a mile or smaller. Your only other win above a mile was Gateway, which is a mile and a quarter, but either way, third win on the season, gain big points, lead the most laps, pretty good night overall. Congrats, Joshua. We'll see you next week. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. That's your winner, Joshua Banks, in the number 35 here today at the Milwaukee Mile into overtime for 154 laps. That additional four miles didn't phase that 35 team. And, Connor, a lot to unpack, a lot to unfold. We've come up to the very end of the regular season. We've got two races left before we reset those points and take that top 12. What do you think's in store for us when we go next week? I think it's going to be a little bit wild. Iowa usually produces a pretty crazy race. You're going to see multi-grooved action. We'll see drivers next to the wall. We'll see drivers on that line near the bottom of the corner. It's going to be a fast type of race, even for a three-quarter mile track. So that should be an interesting race. And then the next week, finishing out the regular season at the old surface at Atlanta Motor Speedway. So that should be fun. No super speedway action quite yet. We'll wait for Talladega in May to have that happen. But this should be a pretty good ending to the regular season and that cut line in that top 12 is still going to be pretty darn close as well so as we set right now iowa the legacy atlanta we hope you enjoyed tonight's action here from the milwaukee mile saturday night racing league has concluded its race here on v speed if you enjoyed tonight's action make sure you hit that subscribe button you'll never miss a single race when we bring you flag to flag coverage all season long 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We go live green flag racing at Iowa next Saturday. Hope you can join us there. We also have a lot of racing for you next week as well. The Overtake iRacing League is going Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We have BTDY on Tuesdays as well. Those all starting from 8.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So hope you can catch us there. And QSR with their Xfinity debut and the first season of that going to race number five at Sonoma. But for everybody here at V-Speed, Adam Baker does all the things in the background, and I'm sure you're tired of looking at that schedule. Connor Horn, my co-commentator up here in the booth with me tonight and all season long. This is Bradley Cooper telling you to have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next time here on V-Speed. <laughs>